Are you recently graduated from your NMLS? Maybe you just got licensed to become a loan officer and you're stepping into the game and you want to know how to climb to the top as soon as possible. You know, for whatever reason you got into this industry or you got into this trade, for whatever reason you invested 20 hours to learn about real estate. Maybe it could have been a family member, a mentor, or someone you look up to, or maybe even a friend who you saw was making real good income through being a loan officer or a mortgage banker or an outside loan officer and you're like yo I want to do that whatever the reason is or whatever the reason was that you got licensed now you got licensed and you're so new to the game you just you know you don't know where to start right you're like oh man where do I start where do I start you know what's the you know I got I got asked this question on my DM and Instagram there you know I get hit up a lot by a lot of uh, loan officers who recently graduated or are starting their NMLS and one of the most common questions is what is the single piece of advice uh, that you could give me that will help me be the absolute best that I can be and it's hard to summarize it all in just one single piece right and so that so I find myself giving one answer and it'll be so long it'll actually break up into like two or three answers and so there are there's that there's not one single piece as a matter of fact there's a few right but in this video I'm gonna share with you three pieces of advice that's gonna help you be the absolute best loan officer that you could possibly be within your environment as a matter of fact I got plenty of videos on this channel at sales remastered on YouTube on Facebook even on Instagram you got short clips of different pieces of information both motivational and sales technique wise that will help you become greater every single day it, you you really do have to practice it though you got to give the time to practice your craft and that's why there's no real single piece is because you're constantly learning and that's one of the most you know exciting parts of being in this job is not not one single day is the same it's always different and I think that's why we can sometimes thrive in this in this uh, in this type of environment is because it's not the same redundant process that's on repeat you get it so stick around whether you're new seasoned or maybe even you like me you've been in the game for a while you've been on the top for a while and maybe you're at a low maybe you want to um, you know get that boost the momentum back so that you could climb your way back to the top and then get a better grip over your financial plan again whatever level you're at right now stick around because I'm gonna share with you three important tips to help you be the best loan officer that you could possibly be what's up everybody welcome back to sales remastered my name is Daniel and I am your host and on this episode as I had mentioned I'm gonna share with you guys three helpful techniques and tips that are is really gonna help you become the absolute best loan officer that you could be and this is very current information this applies now you know and, and like I'd mentioned regardless of what level you're at regardless of where you are in your career whether you just started your seasoned or you know you've been crushing this game for a while stick around because you know sometimes you might hear information on here that you just you've heard before but until you hear it translated in a way that applies to loan officers sometimes it doesn't really dawn on you right it doesn't really strike that chord that helps you find your momentum and find your confidence to create that that boost that you need to help ensure that you're climbing you're climbing fast you're climbing high and and you're climbing often you know so in this episode again I'm gonna share three different tips that are going to help you be the absolute best and starting off with tip number one tip number one is you you have to get past your jitters you gotta get you gotta get out of your comfort zone and become uncomfortable real quick because when you become uncomfortable and I know it's so cliche right stay out of your comfort zone but I, I want to elaborate I want to define it a little bit more for all the loan officers that are watching this video what I'm talking about is you know like we'll use the market change for example right when the market was let's say two years ago when the market was strong and people were calling you in calling you all the time it was very easy to kind of just guide the herd right you're just guiding cattle and so you had a, a ton of inquiries come in and they're asking for something that you could actually deliver and so we got very comfortable with uh, just guiding them in one direction and if they don't want to go in that direction 
we were cool because we understood that right when we hung up, there'd be another person in line waiting to go ahead and, and get whatever that person didn't get. And so we got real comfortable with uh, with quickly qualifying, right? Like that, I, that's how I put it. Because at, at the end of the day, again, whether that person didn't buy or the second person didn't buy, chances were one of the eight to 10 leads that you're gonna get that day was going to buy and you're okay with that sometimes you got two if you're really good sometimes you got three in a day and and what I found is that in today's market it's a little bit different right there's not as many leads and so if you're used to getting eight to ten leads per day and now you're only getting two or three or sometimes even one and sometimes you might want to panic because you're like oh man this is different this is different well the problem is is that if you stayed within your comfort zone and you're talking to people super quick like you're going straight into the sale it just means that you got real comfortable with selling a particular way and so I invite you today to actually step out of that comfort zone I'm talking about for real step out of that comfort zone because you have to you have to not only understand how to slow down and really identify the individual's why, their true purpose. And if you haven't caught um, you know, the live episode or the live video that I shot last, last week on Thursday, oh by the way, every single Thursday, every single Thursday from 8.30 a.m. Pacific time to 9 a.m. I do a live event at Sales Remastered only on YouTube for right now. Um, and this live event happens again every single Thursday from 8.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific time. So I share with you live and you, you're able to comment and make quick notes. You can even ask a couple questions, I'll answer you directly. But if you haven't caught the last one, I shared a few minutes on, on why it's important to you know not only slow down but find the emotional why of the person that you're engaging with. And that's ultimately what, what matters most now in this market because that the the why is no longer like hey I need to lower my interest rate and and you know now the market is is so good that you were able to do that because there was this long streak where we were able to help people nonstop right like it was just clockwork and every every single day people were getting like two three sales per at least on my team we're getting two three sales per day and when that slows down naturally it's human nature to start to to get scared right and so our mind when when we when we sense um, uh, danger we want to go to familiarity we want to go to familiar places this is why people go home or they go you know into an area where they're more familiar they want to go around people that they're familiar with well our way of reacting in sales is when we sense danger we want to we want to resort to familiar ground or we want to escape and sometimes when we escape, we go back to our comfort zone. Unsub, you know, unbeknownst to us, subconsciously, we find ourselves kind of closing off and going back to our comfort zone. And our comfort zone again is going through these fast prequels because we're 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 we have this fear of missing out. FOMO takes over, and so we think that oh man, if if I'm gonna waste my time with this lead, then it means I'm not gonna get any more sales. And it's been a long time since I got sales. Does that sound familiar? So you start <laughs> you start chasing wood, right? Because you believe like there's a fear of missing out on that sale. So you start chasing people that will not give you the time of day. They they won't listen to you. They won't return your calls. But you find yourself putting hours into chasing that person because two years ago or a year ago they would have they would have very well bought for you so my so number one is get out of your, your comfort zone stop chasing deals that aren't giving you aren't giving you time or, or stop believing that there's not going to be people out there who wants to do business with you because the truth is is that what it, you know when you think about like getting on the phone or getting in the sales and this is for the newer loan officers out there watching this video you know you may be you may have this anxiety kind of like the very first time you ever posted to social media or for some of you some of the some of the posts that you make right now like you got this kind of anxiety right like this post like right when you post it you're like oh man you know who's gonna see it who's gonna like it <laughs> right oh man you know you keep looking at the lights like the light count and uh and and some people out there right are 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 so obsessive where they'll take down the post because they there wasn't 10 likes in the first hour and they don't want to look dumb or there's one like and it's been three days so they take it down like oh man i don't want to look dumb and and that's ultimately the best example of why 
why salespeople, especially loan officers, don't like making cold calls. They don't even like selling on the phone. They don't like selling, period. But what they do like is the result. They do like the five-figure paychecks per month. They do like the idea of a six-figure income. They do like how their friend is, is dipping in a $100,000 car, right? They do like the result. But the problem is they don't like the process. And so as a loan officer, we have to really identify and love the process. That's where getting your jitters out is, is, is identifying what pieces of the process are outside your comfort zone and learning how to love it. And 99% of the time, the, re, the, the piece of the process that most loan officers don't like is the hunt. And so it's and it's 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 natural. It's common. It's because you just simply don't know how to hunt. And so that's my uh, number one golden rules is is that you know you want to get out of that comfort zone. Get do something that's different than what everyone else is doing. And then tip number two. You know I know I went a little deep on that one, but tip number two is uh, it's this acronym. It's called Less. L E S. I know less is more, right? And that's that's ultimately what I always think about when I think of this acronym. Less is more. L E S. And L stands for listen. E stands for empathize. And S stands for solve. So again, L E S. Listen, empathize, and solve. That's ultimately the sales process summarized into its basic form. And when you step out of your comfort zone, you know, and you 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 start to actually engage in more and more sales conversations, what you're gonna learn is that you're gonna be more effective when you listen. You see, a lot of times sales men and loan officers, we're more interested in, in what we're gonna say, and that's what kind of causes this hesitation. It's what causes this anxiety when we're engaging with, with our prospects, is that we don't wanna listen, or, or the times where we should be listening, we're more in tune with what we're gonna say when that person's done talking. <laughs> And so we will miss all the subtle clues. We'll miss all the emotional whys that that prospect is giving. And so it's important that you don't miss those important whys. It's important that you listen when, you know, when it's time for the prospect to talk because they're gonna tell you exactly how to sell them. And then empathize is you have to put yourself in your prospect's shoes. You have to put yourself in their position. You know, it, it, I, I think that LES, that formula or that acronym is really about positioning. And you, to position yourself as the consultant versus the salesman, you have to put yourself in the prospect's position and really think about, well, how would this prospect want, how would, how would you, if you were that prospect, uh, want to deal with someone when it talked about a house, when you talked about the financing of your home, when you talked about a subject that you're not too familiar with? How would you want to communicate with someone, right? You'd want someone to be empathetic and be like, hey, man, I know this stuff, this information's kind of, you know, hard to understand because, you know, you don't work in this industry. But fortunately, I do, and I'm the professional. I've been doing this for a long time. I'm going to make this super simple. I'm going to make this super easy to understand. I'm going to make the process super uh, fast, you know, and that way it's, it's like, oh, okay, cool. I like that. You know, I don't want this to be some long drawn out process. Like I'm doing my taxes. And so you have to really be empathetic and empathetic requires that you listen because if you're not listening, how can you be empathetic and view it from that per particular person's point of view? And then finally solve, you know, every salesman is a problem solver. That's ultimately what we do. And what I think the problem is, though, is that typically we can't solve if we choose to sell too early. And so when we engage in these sales conversations, and we choose to sell too early. Well, when we sell too early, we don't know exactly what we're solving yet, right? We don't know why they need the savings. We don't know why they ask for the lower rate. We don't know why they need cash out from their home. We may assume certain things. We may assume that they want to save money because income is tight. We may assume that they want cash out because they want to do home improvements or pay off debt. But until we ask the right questions, we're not able to get them to respond so that we could properly listen and and then solve a specific problem. You see, if, a, if you're going to be a salesman, you're going to want to be a consultant. If you want to be a cons, if you're going to be a consultant, you're going to want to learn to listen, analyze, and solve. Right? Listen, empathize, and solve. L E S. So remember those three letters. Those are really going to help you out. And then finally, number three. Number three. This is the absolute most important lesson, most important tip that I can ever give you. And this is going to be all about finding a mentor, finding someone who's already doing what you want to do 
and and mirroring them or being coached by them or communicating with them, engaging with them. And it doesn't necessarily need to be someone within your environment, although you should always have someone within your environment that you're at least watching from afar. You don't necessarily need to be mentored by them, but just watch them from afar. Meaning that meaning that you're you're asking your manager about their actions. Like, man, how do they do it? Right? And and your manager is more than willing to tell you because they want you to, to mirror those results. But when you're watching from afar, you're seeing their work ethic, you're seeing the way they carry themselves, you're seeing their work habits, right? You're seeing what hours they work, what licenses they got. That's what I'm talking about. And if you want the same exact results, all you got to do is mirror it. But when it comes to being having a mentor, you can have a virtual mentor. If you go to salesremaster.com, which I'll leave a link below this video, it's going to guide you to salesremaster.com, which I have three courses available. The very first course is called Banker's Closer Guide. And ultimately what that is, is a blueprint. This is what I do. I help loan officers sell more loans. I help loan officers thrive and regardless of whatever market we're in whether it's a high rate market a high cost market whatever market I help you close more loans and the bankers closer guide is a blueprint of how to close more loans that's it from from out from A to Z how to close how to originate outbound inbound the rebuttals the objections that you come across how to properly frame a sale sell the sell the prospect into giving you the right information and closing the attention and then not only that but get uh, referrals like you're gonna get commentaries or, or testimonials from your prospects after learning this guide after learning this formula of how to get someone to really buy into you and buy into your company and be so thrilled to work with you. They're going to send you referrals and that's how you build your book of business. But the second program is called The Banker's Formula to Six Figures. And that's exactly what it is. It's a, it's a formula to help you get to six-figure income and stay at a six-figure income. You know, I had this one loan officer reach out to me. He's like, man, I, you know, I, I need a million. I need a seven-figure formula. I was like, bro, <laughs> you know, baby steps, man. Like you need to, you need to learn how to master six figures right and some people think six figures is 100 g's six figures could be 500 g's six figures could be 999,999 dollars right it depends on how far you want to go but this formula will teach you how to get there it's going to shed years off of your climb it's going to shed tons and tons of of rejection and and basically show you kind of like a, a snapshot into the future because these lessons that i share with you like if you think all the content i give on my channel for free is good you should check out the, the information and the content that i give within these courses because it's a life-changing event you know you'll see the testimonials when you go to salesremaster.com but a lot of loan officers that have captured or used the information all of them has said that it has helped them change their life it has helped them climb to the top of their game and and become the top three to five agents in their company. That's what it does. So check it out, salesremaster.com. And if you don't got the available ducats, man, stick around, watch the content. It's going to teach you how to gain uh, some income. But more importantly, it's a write off, right? It's an educational write off. Use a credit card if you have to, you know, put some pressure on you, but get the course and figure out what you're doing and get a mentor. Get someone to coach you and show you the exact answers because if you go through the resistance too much, too much and too often, you're going naturally, you're going to push away. You're going to be like, man, this sucks. <laughs> this is taking forever. You know, we live in a, in, in a day and age where we are all impatient. This is why we got DoorDash. This is why we got text messages. We are just impatient. We are an impatient animal now. And uh, and if you are impatient like me, shit, you probably want to uh, fast track. You probably want the shortcut. And I got that shortcut for you. Go to salesremaster.com and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel whether it's on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, wherever you are. Click the link below, say hello to me, and I'll see you over there. Let me show you everything I know. A jungle slide.